Hey gang, Jack Allaire here, and your favorite time in mine, been a long time, pickups! So, I'm gonna start with the non-gaming things because there's, there's a whole story to this, is that I woke up this morning and I was out of milk. Now, I love to have milk in my coffee, so this was a problem. So what I did is I got in the car, went to the store, decided to get some milk, and I thought, you know, there's this thrift store right around the corner. I'll just swing in and see what's going on. I haven't been there in a while. Maybe there'll be one or two things that I want. Wandering around and I always stop and look at the CDs, nothing there. Look at the albums, uh, the LPs, records, vinyl. Some of you may have no clue what I'm talking about. But in with them, I spied this little beauty, Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, the scariest Halloween of them all, on Laserdisc. So of course, knowing that Laserdiscs don't, don't, don't go out by themselves, they go out in droves. So then I look a little farther and I find the Laserdisc Criterion Collection of Halloween. Eh? Yeah, I know. So at this point I'm like, alright, well I'm not leaving until I find all these stupid things. And then, for some reason, everybody apparently got to Halloween 2, 3, and 4, but I picked up Halloween 5. Meh. And the one that I will show to my children to scare the ever-loving crap out of them Poltergeist. And this is the deluxe letterbox edition, uh, regular price. You can see it there, $59.99.30. Each of these, 50 cents each. Can't even get them on eBay for shipping for that price. Now, the... Wait, one. The games are always up at the front and they're always on a shelf in the back because they easily fit into a pocket and disappear. So, what they do is they keep them behind the counter in stacks like this. So you don't know what the crap they are. So as I'm leaving, I walk up and I say, hey, you know, can I see the 64 games? And I'm flipping through it and I'm like, ah, sports title, sports title. And then I come across the arcade game was amazing. The 64 game I have not played. I've watched a few videos of it, and it looks okay enough. And that is Rush 2. Now, I loved Rush California, loved Rush 2049. I loved the idea that it was a racing game that had shortcuts that were just kind of bizarre, and you had to really know where they were, and you had to be really good at driving to pull off the shortcuts. So that made me happy to pick that up. Uh, that was uh, $5. Now, in between those two, uh, I walk into the back. And the back is where they have just stuff that they really don't know what to do with. Or they can't be bothered to actually like, plug in and test. They don't know if they have the hookups. And I find a Super Nintendo adapter, the power plug. I'm like, great! My nephew needs one of those. I'll pick it up. And then I go over to where they usually have like the rest of the, the wires and the gaming kind of stuff. And there are, there's an entire box of Super Nintendo controllers. And at this point I'm like, oh, could it be? Might I finally find one? And then, and then I look over and there's a Dreamcast sitting there for $4. I already have, uh two of those, so I, I, I pass that by and I come to the next one and I go, oh, what is this? I'm like, oh, it's a stack of PlayStations. Eh, eh. And then there's a stack of PlayStation 1s. And I'm like, oh! Then there's a silver GameCube. And I look at it for a long time. Put it back, leave it there, because I see an entire friggin' stack of Super Nintendos, all for four bucks each. Now, they have the 
not tested sticker on it, so they don't know if it works. They haven't plugged it in, because they don't know what, they, they look at these ports and go, I have no clue, it's not worth the time, you know, to charge $4 instead of $10 after we plug it in and figure out it works. So, I buy this little guy, bring him home, plug him in, and nothing. But, luckily I bought two, because they were $4, so I grabbed a second one thinking, hmm, what are my odds? My odds are that I always end up buying a broken one, so I'll buy two, therefore doubling my chances. So, this little guy does not work. I'll be tearing him apart to figure out why he doesn't work. But uh, Super Mario Kart, as you've been watching in the background, is running on my Super Nintendo. I haven't had a Super Nintendo since Super Nintendo came out. For whatever reason, every time I go to look for one, I go to the store and I say, Hey, do you have any Super Nintendos? And they go, Ah, uh, no. So I am stoked that I now have a working functional Super Nintendo. Hopefully I can tear this part, bad boy apart. Uh, I've watched uh, a few different people do some repairs. So I figure I got a, kind of a good handle on what to do with these little guys. If it's not the chip. If it's the chip, I'm screwed. There's nothing I can do. But if it's not the chip, then there are a whole host of things that I can replace, desolder, resolder, and figure out what's going on in here. So, uh, that's it for pickups, really. Um, we were playing uh, 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 some Mario Land U. We're still getting a grasp on that. Nintendo Land is amazing. I really need to do some uh, footage of that. But it's really hard to do with the gamepad and the, the system itself. So I have to figure out how to do that. I'm going to need like a third person as a cameraman. Uh, because uh, Harvey the Tripod here... In, just didn't gonna cut it but um, that's it for me I uh, hope you guys are all starting off the new year I know mine's starting off absolutely amazing and as always play on <laughs>